introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, Ed you can Frank. Just look at, you can just look at us. Mm -hmm. Ed Frank is my name. Uh, I'm grandpa, grandpa to, or papa, to Lauren, Amy, and Adam. I'm a World War II vet. Uh, I'm 86 years old, and I want to start and tell you how my career started. I graduated in January of 41. That was about uh, close to a year before Pearl Harbor. And uh, the draft was on, and I knew I was going to be drafted when I reached 18. So I decided to go to night school, and uh, which I went Northwestern Night School, which, which was on Chicago Avenue in Chicago. And I got a job at, at Montgomery Wards, which was also on Chicago Avenue. And I went to night school. And one Saturday, one Saturday, I'm going, I'm, I'm taking the L, and I'm going by the old post office, and I see a sign. And there's a sign that says, Uncle Sam wants you. This was Saturday. I got, I got off. I got off the I got off the L. I got off the L, and I went in and I enlisted. I went to the Air Force Park, and I enlisted. Uh, I had to first take I had to first take a uh, the written test, then I had to take a physical test, and I passed both. And then they told me I was underage. I have to get my parents' signature. And um, my dad was the easy one. My mom wasn't so easy on that. And uh, I remember my sister had a baby, and I put the baby on mom's lap, and I told her, I said, look, mom, she said, you can't go. You're my baby. And I said, mom, in six months I'm going to be drafted, and I don't want to go to the infantry. I would like to be a flyer. She signed the paper, and I fought, and I went in, and uh, I uh, went to Camp Grant, and from there they sent me to Keesler Field, Mississippi, where I had my basic training. And at basic training, they gave me a second physical, and they found out the reflex of my right eye wasn't fast enough, so I was in the ground crew, and. Uh, I was actually, actually slated to go to the Pacific, but somehow they got mixed up and I was being sent to Europe. But first, but first I had to go, uh, they sent me to Washington, D.C. I had to go to cryptography school, uh, which was in Pauling, New York. And after that, uh, they assigned me to a communications group there were 16 of us, a real small group, and uh, we set sail from New York Harbor, and I was put on a cargo ship, very small, and about 2 o'clock in the morning, I didn't feel good, and I went into the washroom, and they found out I was marked all over, I had the measles, and one of the fellows came in, and he started yelling. And they didn't have a sick bay, so they took me off, and I went to, I had to go to the hospital for two weeks, and then I had to go to a reassignment section in Brooklyn, New York, and finally they sent me to Westover Field in Springfield, Massachusetts, where I joined my group, my 368th fighter group. And from there, we tra the, the pilots trained, and I was, as I said, I was a photographer, and... Um, we set sail uh, the day after Christmas from Boston Harbor, and I was on a former cruise ship called the Argentina, and uh, they had converted into a, 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 a for GIs, and we landed in Perth, Scotland, and we were supposed to get off, and in comes the Queen Mary. Now the Queen did not have did not have any escorts, came in on her own. So we had to wait four days while they 
unloaded the queen, and then we got off, and and then they sent us to uh, uh, England, which was Andover and Westover, which was near London, about an hour away from London, where our pilots trained, and uh, they trained and trained, and then uh, came D-Day. We didn't know when it was, but we could tell it was close because because most of the troops were sent to Southampton uh, to board uh, the uh, uh, boats to take them to France. But I was put on a Piper Cub, and I was sent over to Normandy as an advance echelon because uh, the engineers were, were going to build a, uh, a, a strip along the uh, uh, ocean there so our planes could land at night and uh, fly back to do their sorties in France, and then they would fly back to England at night uh, and to gas up, and then they'd come back the next day, and then they would land it, it, in, in Normandy, gas up, and do more uh, sorties. And I was with a P-47 outfit, which is a fighter group, and they did a lot, of, a lot of bombing, and they couldn't fly that far that they could escort the B-17s but they did a lot of damage with their bombs and strafing. And uh, we went all the way from France into Germany and into Belgium. And, and I was in on the, the Battle of the Bulge, not, not physically, but our planes were right nearby. And we had to, we had to wait at the, uh, for the weather to clear in, in Belgium. And when the weather cleared, we, our outfit was one of the few outfits that saved the people, saved the soldiers that were in the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, uh, we got a letter of commendation from General Patton, General Wainwright, and another general. And uh, shortly after that, in May, the war, the war, was, uh, the war in, in, in Europe was over, and the war in the Pacific was still raging on. And... Um, I'll never forget that day because one of the fellows in our outfit shot their gun off and our dear major adjutant uh, made us march for two hours because we wouldn't say who did it. But I forgot, I forgot to tell you one story. I was, I was in the cryptography room, it was about two o'clock in the morning, and the teletype uh, men came in with a super secret message that I decoded and, and a super secret message was only for the, the commander in chief's eyes. It was announcing that our planes were to stop running well, uh, because the war was the war was going to end and they didn't want any more bombing. I went into our adjutant, the peanut farmer from Alabama and he said, soldier, give me that message and I said, I can't. I'm giving you an order. I said, I can't. You'll have to wake up the, gen uh, the uh, commanding officer. And with that he did. And I went back into the cryptography room, closed the door, and the fellows were driving me crazy because they wanted to know what the message said. Okay, so I'll go back to where I went back to uh, on the story. Anyway, I was declared essential because I was a cryptographer and I said the war in the Pacific was still going. So I was, I was being sent straight to Manila from France. And uh, they sent me to Marseille and I boarded a troop ship to go straight to Manila and we set sail and we stopped at Gibraltar and for three days we could see fireworks. Now this was in August and to see fireworks on Gibraltar. And we usually had news broadcast on the ship. All we had was music. We didn't know why. Three days later, an announcement came. The war in the Pacific was over. Then they explained about the atomic bomb. And we set sail for New York. We were the first ship to land in New York. And we got the... Uh, uh, fireboat uh, welcome. And I said, oh my gosh, I said, when I, when I got 
got into Fort Dix, I said, my poor folks are really going to drop over when I get to the phone. Two hours I waited, I get on the phone, and my mother answered the phone. She says, I've been waiting for your call. I said, why? She says, it was in the Chicago Tribune that your play, your outfit was the first ship to, to land in New York from Europe. And uh, this was August, and uh, I had to, I decided to uh, go to the University of Wisconsin, where this good friend of mine uh, was uh, told me about it. And uh, that's where I met Barbara, University of Wisconsin. And I was discharged uh, from there. Can you tell us a little bit about the foxholes? About what? The foxholes? Yes, in Normandy. In Normandy? In Normandy, we lived in foxholes, and I know I was up for 72 hours, and then we were told uh, we were told to dig our foxholes, and uh, they had to be six. I think it was six feet deep, deep, and mine was five foot. And the peanut farmer <laughs> from Alabama said, "Soldier, you can't. You got to dig further." So we did anyway. Uh, that first night in the foxhole, I'll never forget. The signal for gas warfare was three shots of a rifle. So some idiot along the beach shot his gun off three times, and I put my gas mask on, and I fell asleep. And the whole night I had a gas mask on, and the next morning I woke up, I had the most severe headache. And then, uh, then another, another thing, we had heard after Cherbourg, which was a uh, huge port in France, had surrendered. And we were told that there was a, a DC, uh, huge DC, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, it, it created power. A generator, DC generator. So six of us went to Cherbourg to get that generator, and like a bunch of idiots, we go went into the fox. We went into the the bunkers where the Germans were. Now I don't know what they call them now, but in those days they called them booby traps, where they could, if you handled something, it could explode. We were like a bunch of idiots, and that's where I got my sword and my helmet and my swastika uh, uh, flag and took it back with the generator. And after that, with that generator, we even had lights in our foxholes. Wow. What about, didn't you eat your food out of your helmet? Didn't they make the film, the helmet, the metal? Didn't you make yeah, at times, at times, well, that was, well, it, in, in France, we had uh, when we first got there, we had K rations. It was like a Cracker Jack box, and then it was cheese and crackers, and not you know not much else, some little uh, uh, canned ham or some little ham s uh, spread. But later on, we had C rations, which were cans, but they had to be heated. So we had we used our helmets and built a fire, and I, and we heated we heated our food in the helmet. We also used our helmets to wash with. Oh, we put water in. How, uh, can you talk about your dog tag with the H? Oh. When, uh, when did you get the dog tag? When you first get in, you get that's the meeting, that's your identification. And you're, you're, you never have a name in service, you have a number. Mine is 1143989. Never forget it. Because if you didn't know that number, if you did the, the first month for payday, they ask you, what's your number? I couldn't think of it. They redlined me. Redline means no nothing that month. You have to wait till the next month to get paid. I couldn't think of my serial number. Wow. How much did you get paid? How often? Once a week? Once a month. Oh, once a month. Forty-one dollars, I think it was. Wow. But, but that was a lot of money. Yeah. We had nothing to spend it on. 
Yeah, that's the thing. I uh, I had a I had a savings account, which I used to put money in, and the government uh, uh, the government paid four percent. And also, I was not a smoker. And uh, in France, I could sell my I could sell my cigarettes. By the way, when we got close to Paris, we never saw they never saw a Chesterfield, a Camel, a Lucky Strike. They were all in the black market. All they had was some cigarettes called Chelsea and things like that. But even my Chelsea's I could sell. Oh, I forgot to say, we got to Paris the fifth day of liberation. Oh. And uh, we were welcomed. You got to see you all in Europe then, right? Talk a little another, bit. Another thing I forgot is that when we were in Normandy, we were told the peasants do our laundry, would do our laundry for, for, for hardly anything. Gave him my stuff, um, um, American underwear, like undershirts, are so thin, they used stones to wash. They took it. When I, when I got my undershirts back okay. in shreds. Oh. And I, also, we had this one guy by the name of Hudson. He was, he was an absolute riot. He could trade anything. He would get us eggs and tomato, and our tomatoes with the farmers. And I'll never forget. He was I, I don't know what part of the South. He was he was a, uh, a redneck. A redneck. He got a, a bottle of champagne, and I'll never forget warm champagne. And he's he's in the middle of the field. He chug a lugs the whole thing down. Oy. About five minutes later, I don't have to tell you what happened to oh him. We have never, well, we have discussed it and our, we still have reunions, by the way. Our outfit, we meet once a year and we always say, God, I wish Hudson, we could never find him. We looked where he was, what town he was from. Oh, no, another story is in Frankfurt. We took over the German wives barracks. Uh, Frankfurt on Main was a huge uh, uh, air, airport for Air Force base for the Germans. Now we took we took over from these German ladies and they're all screaming they wanted their mattresses. We told them get out. We wouldn't give them their mattresses. They invaded the place, right? They, like in the movies, they kicked we out, kicked right? them out. We also we also had a 1940 uh, 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 Mercedes Benz that they left. Anyway, we get in there and they had these gorgeous feather beds and they had all these night shirts and all of us guys put on the night shirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was an absolute riot. Were there bathrooms in the house in these areas? Uh, you know something can't. I, yeah, they I, they had bathrooms. England. England, uh, we took. Uh, they built these places for us. England, uh, they had uh, uh, washrooms, but there were buckets. Huh. And every morning, our whole crew would come, and they were called the Honey Bucket Brigade. Uh -huh. They would empty the buckets. That's amazing. <laughs> it was disgusting. Right. Um, tell us about your journal. What kind of stuff did you write in it? Well, I what I'm telling you here. I mean, such and such a date we left. We left. Oh, uh, we, we you know we, the date we left and, and we went on to Reims, France, or we or we passed Saint Lo, and and, and uh, uh, when we got to Paris, all this stuff, you know. And I also uh, uh, I got to uh, Munich, which is magnificent, and uh, Nuremberg, Munich, Munich, and Frank. Munich and Frankfurt was a mess. Frankfurt on Main was a mess. By the way, I went to look for my grandparents' uh, cemetery, which is a Jewish cemetery, completely ob obliterated oh. in Frankfurt. And were there coffins all over? No, there was just nothing. Wow. The tombstones were lying flat. Oh. I also, when I got to Munich, I got to see Dachau the fifth day of liberation. Oh. We weren't allowed in. All we could do was look in. At that point, all the live bodies were taken out. Oh. But 
what we saw, I think, were bones. I don't think I talked about it. I don't think I talked about Normandy or or or, or the concentration camps until the 50th reunion. They were taken out. All the live ones were gone. Skeletons. All. We were only allowed to the fence. Yeah, it did. But there, there was an odor coming from the furnaces, and they're not that far from Munich. Right, right. And I don't. I could never understand why the Germans, the German people, didn't know what they had to know what was going on there. But also. Our planes could have done a lot of damage to the rail lines leading to the concentration camps. We were they were never given the orders from Washington or from anybody. They could have even bombed the concentration camps. So kill some people; they're going to die anyway. We we bombed railroad tracks and, and railroads. Never allowed to go near. Those cars. Were you like in the foxhole, like in the good, bad, and the ugly, where you were shooting people? Were there Germans coming at you? Uh, Ever? Yeah, well, uh, just uh, just once. I was on the way. I was on the way back from the post office, and all of a sudden, there's a convoy in front of me, and the convoy stopped, and everybody jumped out of their trucks, and I figured. What they used to call a, uh, I don't want to use the word, uh, a, a urine call, where the guys would get out. But that's what I thought it was. Then I looked up and there's there's German planes coming at us, and I jumped out and went into a ditch, and started digging. I I, I thought I was going to try to go that down through. In those days, it was called going to China. <laughs> and and the bullets were on the, coming up the side. And when I got when I got back when I got back to my station, everyone wanted to know my, why my face was so white. <laughs> I, I, once once I, once there was a uh, a German plane. I was on the airfield, and a German plane came in and uh, I did some strafing, and I got a little shrapnel in my leg, and I and. Uh, just a little like this, I went into the first date. I said, I need a band aid. They want to know my serial number. That it says, um, maybe you can get a uh, uh, what they medical leave? No, uh, the metal, the uh, purple heart. I said, purple heart. Yeah. No, I said, I'm not giving you my serial number. I said, for this, I'm not asking for a purple heart. I said, that's no injury. It's it's funny all these little things. Didn't you tell me about Coventry? Because when we went there, they had that church that was bombed out. Didn't you go to Coventry? In no. No. I never went to Coventry. Okay, so where else? Uh, let's see. Um, did you get to go in Marseille, like walk along the streets and stuff? I was I was uh, we were we uh, oh, oh, we were put up in in a, in a camp waiting to. To go to the Pacific in Marseille. Well, you're lucky you didn't have to go there. Yeah. Uh, well, there's another thing I'll never forget. In Marseille, they used to use the German POWs to do all the cooking and the oh, KP. Really? Mm. And they had a big compound with a big fence. And every afternoon, they would take all their clothes off and, and sunbathe. And they had a having a fit. They the could. Germans did? They could. <laughs> they couldn't make them put their clothes on. That's funny. <laughs> That's crazy. What about uh, when you went to France and you went to Normandy with Mom? The, and they over had the museum. Talk about that. Uh, when we went to when we went to no Normandy, I think it was there. I missed the, I I missed our fiftieth reunion. I think it was Adams Bar Mitzvah, and I, we went there on the fifty third. I think was it? no, or was it later? I don't remember. Anyway, when we went to Normandy, uh, we went there on a Sunday, and it was so quiet, and all I could hear was noise. And then all of a sudden, no, it was gorgeous. I just—it's just like it was D-Day again. Right. The pontoons were still there. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm Omaha Beach. You could just see and all the stuff that was still left there. You were standing at this, um, at this sign. Yeah. You were pointing things out. Tell them about it. And this, this, this man from Norway was standing there. You don't remember that? Yeah. Vaguely, vaguely. He said, I, we landed right here. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. guy put his arms around and, him and, uh, and said, oh my God. He said, if it wasn't for you, we'd be speaking we German. We are speaking German today because of oh, you. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That we went, then we went to a museum at, uh, uh, at Cannes, which showed German newsreels and American newsreels on a split screen. Oh. Now, this was even more vivid than uh, Private Ryan. Oh. It was the actual footage. Wow. But another thing about Normandy was on a Sunday, and they had these clarion bells, and they were playing, what was it, God Bless America or America the Beautiful? We were, it started to ring, we were in the chapel. Yeah, oh. At, at noon and when he started playing that, America. I'll tell you, yeah. I started to cry. It, it, that cemetery is... Hmm. It's 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 you something went else to see. Go, didn't you? Oh, okay. Went back to what got away. So did you come? Did you? You didn't run on the beach, did you? You were on a ship already, right? You didn't run on the beach at all. No, no, it came in on a came in on a on a, 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 a Piper Cup, six of us. That's an airplane, right? A little little yeah. plane. Oh, okay. It could land because practically I'm anywhere. Okay, so we were advanced, advanced echelon because I told you, we had to take messages. Right, the cryptography. Yeah, uh, uh, the engineers were lying, uh, were putting down wire mesh on the beach to la the landing strip. Oh. oh, that's what they used that for? Some of the Germans. Well, in the beginning, that's that that was the those were the first airfields. Oh. And some of the German, when we were there, some of the German bunkers were still there. Oh yeah. They say. They say the German cemeteries are there. They use black crosses. The whole thing is black. Really? Everything's black. Why? I didn't see a German cemetery oh. in Normandy, but uh, Bill was telling me about it. Oh, we'll stop and see that. Lauren, can you think of anything else? Um, what are the reunions like? The first reunion, this is interesting, in Chicago, about, uh, oh, let me see, I'd say, 10, about 12 years ago, maybe a little longer than that, I read in the AARP magazine, uh, reunions, would you like to know if your outfit ever had a reunion? So I called that number. Now this is November, and they said to me, oh my gosh, she says, we just had a reunion in Chicago in October. So the first reunion we went to was in Lexington, which a lot of us were there. It was, and then from then on in, I practically went every year. The only time I ever missed was when we moved or when I was sick. I think we missed two of them. Tell about calling Mac and telling who you, your bunkmate. Oh yeah. Two of them were on the phone crying. This, uh, this you got his phone number from the listing of the members. Yeah. And Mac, Mac was the only number. one. You see, the 368 fighter group consists of three squadrons, 395th, 396th, and 397th. I was in the headquarters. And so I didn't know too many of the, the, the people in the squadrons. Uh, but Mac was assigned to us as a cryptographer. So he and I would switch, and I'll never forget it, in um, the Battle of the Bulge, we had no heat, we had no food, and I was on the night shift and he was on the day shift. We combined our blankets, so when he got up, I would get in, and uh, it, was, it was terrible. We had, I think we had our Christmas dinner in February. The Battle of the Bulge was in December. That's a famous battle, right? Where is that? Uh, where? Where was it again? Belgium. Oh. That was the last hurrah the Germans tried. Oh. And they almost succeeded because the weather wouldn't allow us to fly. Oh. 
we had we had to wait until the weather cleared, and they were surrounding our troops. Um, were there any times during the war when you felt like your squadron wasn't going to make it? No. No. That must have been scary. No, it was, no. Most, you see, most air, mo most air force outfits were in the rear. Not, oh, another thing, we were t we were attached to General Patton. Did you ever hear of General Patton? Yeah. Nobody knew where that man was. I mean, he went moved so fast. He would have been in Berlin before the Russians, but they wouldn't let him go. That's on purpose, right? Anyway, our our planes were assigned to Patton. The thing is, we were afraid of shooting. We didn't know where he was, and we didn't want to shoot our own troops. I mean, this man was unbelievable. Did you ever meet him? No. Or see him? No. Never saw him? No. Did you see the movie? Hi, oh yes. He was good. We we hated him. We oh. hated him. When we went out when uh, when I went on R and R leave the, the second time to Paris, he made all of us wear our helmets and gas masks, take them with us to Paris. I never when I got to Paris I never wore them. Nobody ever said anything, but he made us everybody had to take them. He was very strict. Yeah. Well, you heard you heard about that one incident when he slapped that soldier. The one that was in the infirmary, right? He was injured. Oh, yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, you weren't there. It was just a few minutes. No, ago. I think it was in Af was it? He was in North Africa first. Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he said, come on, soldier, get up. Really? Yes. Oh, wow, he must be. How many, well, what were the longest number of days that you lived in your foxhole, and how many days did you go without food ever? <coughs> no, we always had, we always had those rations. Oh, okay. We always had something to eat. Mm -hmm. And then my, and then my folks sent me packages. Oh, okay. We all had packages that were sent to us. How long would it take for a package to get Oh, here? God. Must have been forever. Because you're always on the move. Yeah. But you didn't get to go home for like holidays, right? During the, the war was on, right? It's not like now where they had all the people in. Like, once, France. once I got a five-day pass and I wasn't. A three-day pass and they, they extended it to five days, and I think I was stationed in. I'm trying to remember where I was stationed then. And I took a train to Chicago. Oh. Yeah, but once you were in Europe, you were never. Oh, home. we never had it. Oh. No, we would get we would get days off, like I could go into London. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had a, <laughs> I had a funny incident in London with uh, this friend of mine, Jack Kleppner, in Chicago. His mother and father and sister lived in London. Mm -hmm. They escaped from Nazi Germany. And they could get to England, but they couldn't get to the U.S. And I'll never forget the first time I went there, they had me for dinner. And I never realized what the English went through. Don't forget, they were in the war three years before we got there. Mm -hmm. And they had such rations, they had really didn't have much food. And when she sacrificed, and I found out, the next time I went back to London, I went to my buddy at the mess hall, and he gave me canned food and all this stuff. And they hadn't seen they hadn't seen fruit in three years. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, his sister, oh, I think must have been about forty, and her husband was a prisoner of war in Shanghai. Mm. So. I took I, I I said I said would I, I took it to a movie so I had never seen Piccadilly Circus and I we, we got off the uh, tube that's the subway and at Piccadilly Circus and walked around and that was a place you never took a nice girl to. Oh really? That's where all the prostitutes were and all the GIs would say, "How much does she want? How much?" I was so embarrassed. I said, "Why didn't you say something to me?" 
I said, I would never, I said, I could have gone to Piccadilly on my own. Mm -hmm. What about Tom, when you, after the war, you came to New York, right, and you met that woman, Simon and Oh, Tom. that was, that was, I was, I was stationed in, uh, I was stationed in, the, in, in New York. Was that before they went? No, This is before I was, I was waiting to be reassigned. I was in uh, Brooklyn, New York. When I got out of the hospital, that's where, that's where I went to oh, the hospital. Oh, at the measles. Okay. At the measles. So that's where uh, I was stationed, and I uh, and I went on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, what was the big temple in uh, New York? Temple Emanuel. Temple Emanuel. And I had just seat. gotten off. I didn't have time to get a room or anything. After services. I was in a, in, a, in a drugstore. In those days, the telephones were in the open. And I was on the phone trying to get a hotel room. And this woman, uh, elderly, this elderly woman, I would say in, in her 70s, heard me. And she said to me, Soldier, where are you staying tonight? I said, I'm trying to get a room. She said, would you like to stay in my library? Oh, I thought that was wonderful. It turned out to be M. Lincoln Schuster's wife, the publishing company. I didn't sleep all night looking at all those books. Well, that could have been you and you. I thought that was so nice of her. It was. Where was the, the library? It was like a wing of their house. Oh, it was a mansion. Was it a house? A mansion? A mansion. In Manhattan or? Yes. Oh, wow. It might have been like a penthouse. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't remember all the details. Well, if you have me. Yeah, and don't ask him what he did mm. yesterday. What else? Anything else? Mm. Who were your like best friends at? Oh, well, we had. Oh, that's another thing. There are four of us. There was Master Sergeant Teamy, who was brilliant. I mean, he had an IQ. He was regular. He. Don't forget when I was in the Air Force, it was part of the Army. It was not separate yeah, yet. Exactly. Also, also. When did that separate? Yeah. Oh, um, after the Korean War. Oh. Also, it wasn't integrated. What do you mean? Oh, the blacks were in one. We, we, the only time we ever saw a black soldier was driving a truck, or in uh, handing. Uh, KP. No, they didn't. We did our own. I, they were on. They were not. On no. They, they were never in our outfit. The movies you always saw them on KP. Yeah, well, that was afterwards when they integrated. Anyway, uh, lost my train of thought. Your four friends, there was yeah, the four Oh, yeah, Timmy and then uh, uh, Pratt, who was a uh, professor at Cornell, and then my friend uh, uh, I can't think from Massachusetts. Huh? Yeah. My, that was my best friend. Johnny or? No, no. Johnny was in another outfit. Well, that's another story. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we played. Mac, you forgot Mac. Mac wasn't with this group, though. Mac wasn't part of the four of us. Oh, I thought he was. No, no. We played bridge. Four of us. Now, who ever heard of anybody in service playing bridge? All the fellows would play craps. We played bridge. We were, I'll never forget, we played, well, sometimes we played all night. Four o'clock in the morning, we had the radio on low. We heard an announcement. President Roosevelt died. I'll never forget that. Roosevelt, FDR. Go on. Well, I'm just saying, but he was our, we were very, very close. But I'll never forget uh, our professor friend from Cornell, he couldn't stand the way the Southerners, they would say, where's it at? He used to say, what's at me? And they'd look at him. He couldn't, he's trying to correct their English. He's another one that never came to reunions. And we were always wondering what happened to him. Is he older? Sam was married. He had a child. Tell them how all the uh, children of, of, the, of the deceased pilots and everything have taken over to 
Oh, our reunions, yes. Our reunions used to be uh, from the veterans, from us. We would be the host. If we lived in a certain city, we would have the reunion. And we would take care of everything. They wanted me to have it in Vegas about five years ago. I went around to all the casinos, called them up. They would give me a pretty good rate on the rooms. Hospitality room, went to the Gold Coast, $45 for the room, $750 for a hospitality room. I couldn't have it. We had, we, had, we had met a friend on a cruise that lived here who sort of knew a few of the big shots that knew the mayor. He even called the mayor and said, look, this is a World War II outfit. Couldn't you help these boys out? He didn't. Anyway, it's gotten to the point now. Last year there were 22 of us. This year it was 15. Now, there, there's more, but they wouldn't, some of them wouldn't travel that far. Not many of us left. I mean, I, I am probably one of the youngest. There might be one person that's maybe a year younger than me. I think Randolph is a year younger than me. And uh, so that, that what's, that's what's happened with the, with the okay. these are children and grandchildren of the people who were originally in the outfit that had passed away. But they are having these reunions to their liking. And the one in Nashville, which was at the Grand Ole Opry Hotel, which we were there about 20 years ago, we loved it because we could walk. There's a lot of walking. It's a magnificent place. They had it last year. Most people had to rent a wheelchair of our, our group to get around. Nani and I could still walk. But it, it just wasn't good. And this year they had it in Florida. At Amelia Island. Did you ever hear of it? Millionaire place. With uh, uh, five-star hotels. And it, it, a lot of people didn't, a lot of the veterans didn't go. It was too expensive. But this year, we're, this coming... September, October, it's going to be in Phoenix. It should be nice. These Grace, Grace sisters, their father, their father was a pilot. And uh, their brother is more or less in charge. He wrote, he wrote that book. Did you ever see my book? Which book? You had an extra one. I have, I have the, uh, did I give you the soft copy? No, that, where is that? Sarah? I know where it is. You don't know where it is? I do. Uh, Huh? Is that the hard copy? That's the hard copy. Where's the paperback? Which one is it? The one underneath. There's only one book there. That gives... The, the, problem, the problem was they put a lot of pictures in. I sent my pictures to the historian, uh -huh. and he was supposed to send them back. But he was sick at the time, and he died. Uh -huh. Nobody knows what happened to all my pictures. Uh -huh. To all your pictures? I, I sent a lot of pictures in. Me in the foxhole. Oh. I think I had a few left. You had them in the book. Yes. And, um, but a lot of my pictures just disappeared. Oh. Now, on the first version... That book was put together by Tim. So was the other. But the, mag, the, the, the soft cover, the soft cover has no pictures of me. But they found some. And in the hard cover, I think there's one or two pictures of me. Uh, Tim is, was related to uh, one of the... His, his father. father. His father. His father. And his four sisters. The They're the ones family. having the reunion. Oh. They're, oh. they're wonderful oh, people. Oh, God, they are the most. And his mother is still alive. Yeah. Uh, you said Johnny Politech's another story. Oh. Johnny Politech was from originally from Vienna. 1938. That was after, uh, that was after Kristallnacht. They were, they had to leave Vienna. They were lucky. They came to this country. He was a young teenager, and uh, he became my best friend in Chicago. And uh, 
he was he was uh, given the job as interpreter. Wait, was he in Hyde Park with you? Did he go to Hyde Park? Park? Yeah, he graduated with me. Oh, I didn't realize he was that young. Elka yeah. dated him at Madison. Oh. Yeah, he went to. He would write me letters from Madison while I was in service. He was what they call an ASTP. That was. Uh, they were training them to be officers okay. at Madison. I got a question. So he came to this country. Was he automatically a citizen from Austria? Because like now. No, they they became citizens. But he got to go, and then he joined the army. Well, uh, actually, they let the, the undocumented people do that too. Well, they they, they become citizens of the the Hispanics. Uh, yeah. Right. Anyway, no, I I think his. Knowing his father was a his father was a lawyer who spoke six languages, mm -hmm. yeah. they his parents would never allow a word of German spoken in their house, oh, never. Mm -hmm. What about the time Mark Locke at the at the uh, oh, PO oh, yeah. office? A PO. Another another guy that was in my graduating class, Mark Mark Locke. Mark Locke. Yeah, sure. Mark yeah. Locke I was, this is the uh, this is before the incident with the strafing of the plane. I was at the post office oh. picking up the mail. It was my my turn, and I'm standing in line, and someone pokes me on the so sh shoulder. Mark. Mark Block. That's funny. And uh, he was stationed in the next apple orchard. You know what an apple orchard was in in uh, in Normandy. Uh -uh. Normandy the. It was treacherous. It was treacherous yeah. because there were hedgerows in oh. squares. And to get through with the armored vehicles, they had to chop down these hedgerows. Yeah. And they were like this. Oh. And in Normandy, they were just squares. It's squares. It's like the farming town, right? It was all farms. Yeah. yeah. And they built that just for the war? No, no, no. That was, that, that's how. Do you, um, do you keep in touch with people from your group like throughout the year? Do you talk to I them? Talk to, I talk to uh, two or three. I talk to, I talk to uh, what, Mac, oh. and I, I email. He doesn't have he doesn't have a you computer. Talk to Randolph too. I, I, I talk to Randolph, and, and I email Randolph. Well, Richard's a grand, what, And man. Tim. How old are these guys? Uh, Ra Ra Randolph's a year younger than me. And uh, Mac is is uh, is my age, and uh, Stover, isn't that, um, Patton, Patton, uh, uh, oh, Richard. Richard. Uh, Richard uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I emailed them too. They're they're now that's it. Their cousin, their cousin was a pilot, hmm. and they religiously but come he's to. The one that put that book together. Yeah, Air, who? Oh, Tim. Tim was. Oh, yeah, Richard. Oh, Tim was brilliant. Tim wrote this book, son of one of the years, years of research. Years. Where does he live? Arizona. Now he is. He's in a, in California. No, no uh, uh, he's in a. Uh, I forgot where he is now. Uh, he's psychology a professor now, mm -hmm. in a prison. Oh. In a prison. In L.A. No, he's in I a small. In California. No, I have his address. It's 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 some it's some place in. Yeah. He's in a, a at a prison. Melanie isn't with him, is she? Now she is. He got married when he was in his forties. They're the most adorable couple. They're going to take. They're still taking off. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, she she'll edit some of this yeah. stuff out. I'm sure. Um. Oh, how did you get home from Normandy when the war was over? Oh, that, that was another story. Oh, that's another story. Okay. That's another story. Uh, we were put on a on a uh, train. When I tell you, it was probably from the Civil War. <laughs> it had it had a potbelly stove. Right. I I'm trying to remember if we had a. Wa I don't think it had a washroom. We had a stop. Right. Was this from New York? Fort Dix, New Jersey, mm -hmm. to Camp Grant, and it was so hot mm -hmm. and so dirty. We had to open the windows. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but we were not expected 
So the railroads, every time a speeding train went by, they pushed us to the side. It took us three days to get to Camp Grant, Illinois. And you lost everything. You lost all your. Well, that was on. Well, that was because when the ship landed in New York, they didn't know what to do with our stuff. So they told me one of my duffel bags. I couldn't take both of them because I couldn't haul them. Said one of them is going to be sent to some place in California, and I'd, I'd, I would get it back. This is where all my souvenirs were. Uh, I never got them. Your box, your jacket, your, your, your flight jacket? Every, everything was gone. Well, you know what? You should try to find that now. How? People do that. How? I don't know. Let's after after 1945? Yeah, but you know what? You, you've heard those stories sometimes. Somebody yeah, probably you picked it up. up. Yeah, somebody probably picked it up. Oh. Yeah, but it probably had, the name was probably thrown out now. I, I can't even remember. It was someplace in California. That, why they sent it to California, they sent all of them. They didn't they, know what to do with us. It was like a clearinghouse area. Well, they weren't expected. They didn't yeah. know what to do with us. Well, maybe you can find out... Uh, Somehow the guys oh, they probably the destroyed it since the 45. The guys going to the Pacific were all leaning over the, the rail of the ship, seasick, so they seasick? Oh. until they announced that your Oh, no, no, nobody, no. We yeah, were when sick. they announced your destination was home, they all of a sudden No, 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 you got it wrong. That's the way you, you got, go. no, no. We stopped at Gibraltar. We never were on the ocean. We were told at Gibraltar the war it ended. Nobody was seasick from Gibraltar to New York. Oh. And everybody, when we passed the Statue of Liberty, everybody was crying. Oh, that's cool. Well, you were there, what, three and a half years? Yeah, three and a half years. Wow. You know, as bad as that war was, I don't think it's as bad as Iraq. Why? Well, we knew who we were fighting. Right. Oh. The only time, the only time we didn't know the Germans had a whole group of men that they were training in American. Speak American, and they were coming on to the airfields trying to destroy our planes. They had no air force left. So we were told, if we suspected somebody, ask them an American question. Oh. Who won the World Series? Okay. Who was Joe Lewis, uh -huh. boxer? Right. They couldn't answer American questions. Uh -huh. They spoke perfect American English. Wow. They were still, huh? They planted them? They planted them yeah. at different airports, at different airfields. And why did they do that? To destroy our planes. Oh, God. I mean, they, well, you know. The, 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 the guys that were in the Pacific, that Tokyo Rose that was on the, on the radio. Oh, we were welcomed in England. I forgot what her name was. From Japan had a, had a woman on, on radio. We, the, the army radio. Yeah, from uh, Tokyo oh, and also Tokyo from Germany. Rose. I remember that name. Yeah. And, oh, she tried, what she tried to do was destroy the morale. Yeah, She's, she told, when we got in, welcome 368th. Hope you enjoy England because that's the last thing you're ever going to enjoy. Wow. It's a pity. It's terrible. You, well, you know. You know, Sharon, you know Mickey was attacked by a Japanese soldier. Yeah. It was vicious. Yeah, they were. I had another thought. I, I forgot what it was. Eddie, what did you do Get yesterday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? What? What did you say? I asked Eddie what he was doing yesterday at 4 o'clock in the oh. afternoon. Waiting, waiting to go to uh, the casino where I shouldn't have gone. Oh, we lost that no. money. But it's, so, it's so funny. It Before we met the you. The more long-term memory you have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what's a good story to end with? The story ended with. No, what did, yeah, what did you? Yeah. I got my discharge in uh, at Madison. I had to. I had to wait three months because they couldn't find my money from my savings account, so and I. Pay, I refused. You, to, right? I refused to take my discharge until they oh. found my money. They paid for you to go to college, like they do still now. They gave us seventy-five dollars a month. 
supplied us with all of our books, all our supplies, and paid for all of our education. And uh, this so I used to take mom out and order a steak, and she'd order spaghetti because she thought I didn't have any money. Peanut butter sandwiches at, at, the, at, the, at that grill. I would order a peanut butter and relish sandwich while he sat there peanut and Peanut butter and relish? She still does. Oh, I love it. oh, my God, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. Wait, what was it like when you uh, reunited with your family, like Millie? Oh, yeah. After three years. Oh. She you was married, right? You could imagine. Did she have kids yet? Was she married to Bob? Uh, Barbara oh. was born before the war. Oh, okay. Barbara was born in 41 oh. in August. Before the war, right. And, and Dick was born when I was in France. Oh, okay. So you had met Barbara. Oh, you saw Barbara. Dick was born while you were Barbara born. was a baby then. Okay. I, hadn't, I hadn't seen Dick. Oh. And Bob was in service. He was still in service when I got home. Oh, he where was, was he? CVs. What's that? Uh, Navy. Oh. Navy had a group that... Uh, engineers. Like were. engineers. He helped build, oh. build things. Uh, yeah. That's where he got... That's where he got asbestos lung cancer. That's Dick, not Bob. Honey. Bob. Dick didn't have it. No. Dick didn't have oh, Bob, Bob right. lung cancer. Well, what, what, what was Dick in the Navy? He was. Dick was never in service. I thought Dick he was. supplied the Navy with computers. Yeah, and, oh, that's and right. computer that's stuff right. with NASA. Yeah, right, right, right. Do you have water in here? Oh, what do you want? Water? Do you want I'm something sure, to cold? Sharon, sure, open the refrigerator. Oh, There's a bottle. Okay. There's some bottles. Take the bottle out of the refrigerator. The top right. Or you want, I've got cream soda just, or root beer. Just, That's all I've got. He's lost his money. Is there anything else you want to add, Papa? I've got cream soda, Sharon. And then we can put a new one in. I hate cream soda. I can't, I'm trying to it's think of other good. incidents. We don't drink, you know, we never drink. Only my mom's only. Oh, my gosh. All right, let me, uh, I may as well also.